Probably won't though. Probably not gonna need any of that. But I did it anyways. Welcome to the channel. I've got a big update for you on our robotic ball and socket BB-8 T-Rex head now arm situation. Just to bring you up to speed, if you haven't been around for all this nonsense, this is a previous version of our robot. As you can see, that's basically terrible and kind of just spins horrifyingly around, but hey, it works, sort of. Version three kind of looks like I hot glued a, a sea urchin to a piece of wood. It works better than the others, but <laughs> Didn't, didn't really work that well and it looks awful. Version four, not, not actually terrible, surprisingly. I don't know why that surprises me, but it wasn't strong enough to do anything besides move itself. Enter version five, five, six, five, or, none of this matters, five or six. And all of that bad knowledge, uncritical thinking, and just general negative mojo brings us to today's robot build. I've been tinkering away with Tinkercad on this model for the last month, and then after that was done, I sent it to our 3D printer and it had just a great time not clogging. Totally didn't clog once, 700 times, I swear to God. I fixed those clogs by swapping to a direct drive. It's the easiest way to fix problems, just completely replace it all. Shotgun method. Worked out really well. We also installed some LED lights. If you want to check out that video, I'll link it in the description. One of the bigger changes that we've made into this robot is we're adding bearings to a lot of the moving surfaces to try to make it so they're not plastic on plastic or any of that terrible stuff. An issue I noticed on the previous build that we're gonna to fix today is when the puck actually goes to the edge, I want it to stop, but I don't want it to stop because it just jams into something or it falls apart, no. Let's put some micro switches in here, program that into the Arduino Uno and get some good code happening here. It was a little challenging because when you push the joystick this way and it runs into this micro switch, I have to make it so it can still go the other direction and doesn't get stuck before it runs into the other micro switch on the other side. A little confusing in the code, but nothing that 17 hours and a couple tequila shots can't make worse and then I make better the next day. It's exactly the timeline of how that, that that's it. Then we'll just slap that on there and put a little T-Rex arm on it. Looking easy, 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 easy. Little T-Rex arm, looking good. Now that I've got the mini T-Rex arm attached to our BB-8 head, obviously, we can figure out how strong it is. Before we do that, I was about to throw away the box. Our portable electric fish scale came in. Did you ever notice that there's like a standard font for like Chinese things that come to America? I don't know what that means, but the back of the box, oh, that's where the gift just keeps on giving. Super screening description. The screen, if, that, if that's what they're getting at, the screen ain't half bad. Designing smart by personal characterize. I, I don't even know what they're trying to say. Bigger volume, higher precision. And I, I say that to my wife every, every night. She doesn't care. Very cabinet and being suitable to carry it. I believe it is suitable to carry cabinets with a 100 centimeter ruler. Ironically, that's the best darn thing on the box. Even if we get terrible results from this strength testing today, um, well, it's only like six months of work that went into it, so it's fine. Magnets have something called a pull strength and a shear strength. Pulling magnets apart from each other or from a piece of steel or anything like that. They also have what's called shear strength. That's when you're sliding magnets across from each other to actually get them to pull apart. For vertical pull strength, we almost have three pounds. That's awesome. That's, that's honestly what I wanted the rest of the results to be like, but um, for what I'm gonna call moving in the Y axis, up and down, well, more like three eighths of a pound, barely. Sometimes it got to a half pound and then sometimes it fell off violently at the end. But ironically, a third of a pound was still enough to break the zip tie from Harbor Freight. What I'm trying to say is Harbor Freight, hit me up if you need a robotic arm testing robot to make sure your zip ties sometimes don't work. But also, if you're that guy at Harbor Freight that tests zip tie strength, you know, hit me up because this robot, you're gonna have to reset it a lot. <laughs> you still got a job. Don't worry, buddy. Unfortunately, though, going in the X motion, we only got about a tenth of a pound. When spinning on the X axis, the bearings like to just car ramrod into the center of the globe. Shoot up the edges real nice, like right here. So we've got a new design that's gonna take care of all those problems. You know, we got a new design. Stay tuned for that version because if it can pick up a quarter pounder reliably, that's gonna be flipping burgers soon, I guarantee it. Well, no, it, it might not be, but you know, 